Welcome to Ghostly Talk Shows. Lead from within. Find your own voice. Challenges we have had to overcome in 2020. Find your own voice. The world has become united by the unseen, knowing there are no guarantees for tomorrow. Lead from within. Find your own voice. Let the world hear your voice and be filled with it. For the day has come for you to be a great leader. The time has come to break away from the pain, distraction, experience the unthinkable. Welcome to Ngozi Talk Shows, everyone. If it is your first time at Ngozi Talk Shows, please uh, subscribe to our channel. My name is Nomsa Clara Mnube. At Ngozi Talk Shows, we talk about all subjects from all walks of life. And um, we help you find your own voice and lead from within. With me today is Dr. Biget. Dr. Biget, please introduce yourself to our audience. Thank you, Nomsa. And I have a question for you. My question is, do you... Can't hear you, Dr. Biget. What's happened? Okay, I don't know what's happened there with uh, Dr. Biget. But she is going to join us in a minute. So our topic today is um, what is the impact of grief and loss? Are you going through pain in this moment? Are you someone who lost their loved ones during the pandemic, through pandemic? through cancer, through unexplained death, through so many diseases. There's so many diseases out there. Uh, it could be unexpected death. So are you someone who is going through a roller coaster ride? Because grief can feel like a roller coaster ride. Um, those Okay, here is Dr. Biget. Thank okay, you. Yeah. You're back, Dr. Biget. So, thank you and good morning. So, introduce yourself and yeah. Thank you and and good morning. So, I have a uh, questions for you. My question for you: Do you ever have a loss? Or perhaps do you ever have a time where you feel there is something really unsettled with you, but then you just decided to keep on going, to keep on running, so to say? Do you know, another question is, do you know some people who, some, who has some seemingly mysterious and very stubborn condition, perhaps something like a back, a migraine or a back pain, or if, if uh, some other condition, blood pressure, that seems to be very, very stubborn, very resistant to treatment. And another thing that I, my, my third question is for you, we start with a lot of questions today for you, is do you know, have you hear about the great here at least in the United States and also actually really all over the world. There are, it's basically what we call, uh, that there is a lot of um, healthcare, healthcare people, people who are in the healthcare industry who seems to have a, a significant burnout rate. The burnout rate has been so high lately for people in a lot of things, but in particular healthcare industry. Now, if you do, what do you think is the common, might be the common theme of this? Listen on and we'll share with you 
what it is that could be a common theme and why actually um, and why you want to address when things going on instead of either burned out or become physically ill because one of the common theme of this is actually unresolved or unrecognized grief can cause all of this and this announcer will share with you on how that can happen as well as how you are uh, you'll be able to navigate this and resolve this so you don't fall victim thank you so much thank you so much uh dr bigot i like it when you when you touch on unresolved and um, unrecognized grief because sometimes we can we can be in denial and thinking that we are not basically grieving is not all about the grieving about death. It's a, it's a loss of something. When you lose something, it's a grief that you have to go through. But when you ignore that grief and you pretend that nothing has happened, and it, or if you don't recognize it, it will show up basically. And how? what do you do? when the grief shows up and then it takes over your character. I, I know you you are a grief coach and you work with so many clients from all walks of life. So what, what can someone do that? I'm not gonna basically be giving advice a lot because I've got no clue what I'm talking about when it comes to grief, only in my own experience. But all I know is everyone is different. So don't be surprised if I ask you too many questions because I need people to get more and more from you. So what do you do when someone, they don't recognize the grief and they have unresolved grief and it shows up and it affects their personal life? Yeah. I would say, first of all, one thing is some people, uh, you, you, you use the word denial, and denial is possible that it could be somebody has to denial. But also, I would say, in a form of grief, I don't know if most people have a denial or a lack of awareness. And and kind of like denial can can put a guilt in someone, and that's the reasons I I want to clarify that some of us simply are just don't know, <laughs> you know, kind of like you don't know that you don't know situations, and so and, and which means it's not your fault. Uh, and and the first thing I want to clarify, I'm going to re revisit this in, uh, at some point later today in case somebody join in later on. But grief, as you say, it is not always about that. I know you listen to me about 50 times by now. So, uh, But for those who are new, grief is not only from the big four. Grief is not only from death, divorce, dire diagnosis, and job loss. Any loss can cause grief. Any hope unmet can cause grief. And that including loss of familiarity, loss of routine. So any change in your routine, in your familiar routine, any change or which is a loss, if it turn it and and if it's a change doesn't feel like and it doesn't involve any loss to you then it might not cause any grief. But uh, almost any change it involves, even if it is involves something new, it's usually involves letting go of something else in life because such is life. You Let's say you, let's say you, uh, you got married, which is something and magnificent and wonderful and something that is with your with your. Uh, uh, clients, yeah, you know, your work clients, perhaps Numsa, you got married. It's something so awesome and wonderful. Everybody happy to get married. Yes, that's something new, and you gain something, right? And you might say, "Well, I got married, so that's supposed to be a happy, supposed to be a happy occasions." And at the same time, what what do you lose, or what are you letting go? A familiarity, if you've been single for a long time. A familiarity of being single, being able to do whatever you want, whenever you want, don't have to worry about other people, and and perhaps you got the move, 
and you per, uh, one of you might be able to stay in the same home, but the other person then have to move. Or both of you might move. Sometimes you move to a different city and town all together. And so in my book here, Seeking Peace, one of the story I share was a, uh, about a lady. She's been my friend. It says actually she was a client and a friend and she, she wanted to get married for a good long while and she got married and then to what she called her her dream, her Prince Charming. It was a, a dream in everything. And then she started having challenge. She's having a bit problem. And that's because, well, she got married. She moved to a uh, to a, a man she just adore and love, but she moved out of town, a completely different neighborhood and all this other thing and her need to restructure her work and so forth. And so anything that can that come with a change can cause you any change that can cause you to have an unsettling feelings or hope and man. You are expecting that the pandemic and the leftover effect and the whole thing about it already over long from now in the past it was uh, you know I, I i was listening to a, uh, some speaker and and i was looking back at myself back in the day i'm like what how is things gonna last and and for me when they locked down your los angeles and they said we'll be locking down at least two weeks i was like with my medical education so i'm like i i, I don't think it's gonna be two weeks Maybe it's a couple months, but that was my expectation. <laughs> that was a couple years ago, and so and so that was a uh, you know what what hope unmet do you have? What change have you experienced? And if the, these are not recognized because you didn't know before this, this all can cause unsettling feelings. And then this, that's which means this all can cause grief. And so what about you, Numsa? Have you experienced any uninvited change lately? If I experience what, sorry? Uh, uh, any change? Any? Yes, I, uh, I'm going to... Uh comment on what you just said about lockdown basically when when uh, the lockdown was announced as well here in the uk it was like only for one week and then one week it became two weeks and two weeks it became one year and one year it became two years <laughs> so to me it was a big loss because i felt that i have lost that independence where i just get up in the morning I know that I'm going to work. I'm going to book my clients without anyone telling me that you cannot go out and see your clients. And, uh, you know, that sense for me, it was a grief because, like, I even stayed away from the news. Uh, my daughter basically became my uh, journalist, updating me with what is going on. I didn't watch the news. I didn't want to watch the news and everything. I just... I basically just wanted to, I wanted it everything to be over. And when it, it was over, when it, um, uh, basically when they announced it, a uh, few months ago that from April, the any restrictions in the UK and for me it was that relief you know when somebody tells you that no longer restrictions like you can be careful and I knew that I will still be careful I will still be um look after myself and wear mask when it's when it's needed but there was a loss of finances like you were saying that um grief is not just grieving losing your loved ones i was facing grief on both sides basically losing the people that i knew and the people that i knew during lockdown that lost uh, their marriage were broken and you know when you care about someone and someone tells you that i'm splitting up with my husband or the husband telling you that i'm splitting up with my wife and if you know that person very well it's a grief for me because 
these people is the people that I care and I love. And so for me, I felt that it was basically a double, double grief, losing my friends, having broken marriages and uh, losing finances, business wise, losing my loved ones during the pandemic. I think it, it was, I would say it was too much, but I knew that I knew I had uh, I had someone holding my hand, telling me that everything is going to be okay. I wasn't walking on my own. God was walking with me. So those are the beliefs and having gratitude and looking at my family that I am here, but someone lost their lives through. I knew that pandemic was there, but I knew that it's not just pandemic that people are dying from. Someone is being told that they have cancer or someone is being told that they are dying. There were so many things. And uh, also my father-in-law during lockdown, he went basically bonkers. And for me, it was the loss of losing the man that I knew, the character that I knew, and then having to meet this new person. But he worked out really well that he went back to his normality whatever that normality we might think it would be so he worked really hard but it, it it did hurt so much in a way that i basically but i did cope with it i did cope with it as a christian the the bible helped me and you as well dr bigger just talking to you and when we are here we talk about grief um and I'm learning from you because you explain the character, you explain the differences, and you explain how to deal with it. And when I'm when I, when basically you are here, I'm not just listening for the audience; I'm listening for myself as well, and that really helps. So the finances basically I was hit so much in a way that basically I had to downsize. So that is where I can say yes. That's where it, 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 it hit us so much in a way that the lifestyle that we had, it had to, it had to be adjusted. And we were not used to it. You know, when you're used to that freedom and that freedom is not there. But having you every single day, gratitude, watching you on social media and saying, what, what are you grateful of? I knew that finances are finances. But I'm grateful for my life because life is important. If I have my life, I can rebuild my business. So I don't know what I've just said. If someone was going through that at this moment, what advice can you actually give them? Because I've coped with the situation, but there might be someone out there who's not really coping with the situation. And because grief can be like a roller coaster, right? When some days you're good, some days you're bad, and some days things are crazy. Yeah, I I love some of the points. I want to point out some of the points that he mentions there. And the first one is with, is with gratitude. Sometimes there are a couple and misunderstanding about gratitude and grief. And the first being some people, some people would say, gratitude. I have everything upside down in my life. How could I be grateful? Now, gratitude is good for grief in, in many cases. And in some cases, it's uh, when you're grieving, it's not. The time that I want to advise to, to be mindful is to not use what I say, to use gratitude as a spiritual bypass. In other words, some of us say, oh, I'm using a different example. My significant other, my spouse is uh, on a regular basis, yell and scream at me. So verbally and or physically abusive. And then you say, you know what, considering everything going on in life, I'm grateful. And then you just let that happen. Hello, uh, that's not what gratitude is about. Now you can say, okay, my, my spouse is 
verbally and and uh, and maybe even physically abusive and that's not something that i want to let happen i am grateful that i'm alive i'm grateful that i can reach out there and see if who can help me i'm grateful that there are resources on the internet but i'm not letting this heck continuing to happen so that's that is not using gratitude as spiritual bypass. Or perhaps you uh, you have a loss, though, whether it is a loss of the home that you know, like you say, Numsa, or a loss of a person, whether as you, in, in your father-in-law case for um, the person still there, but his de- their demeanor and so forth, or a, a physical loss. Might be with the pandemic uh, here in the United States, uh, uh, anyway, at least, seemingly every other person's move. A lot of my friends whom uh, we were really close with, they <laughs> in the United States quite big, they move all over the place, like to the other end of the country. Like, what the heck? Uh, and so it could be a physical loss, even if it's the person's not the person's still alive if they move far away and before you uh, they are somebody you can get together now they're like we now we are six hours apart flying <laughs> so that's still a loss right and so that is something that you want to to honor and recognize and um, in any of those and yeah and you might say okay i'm grateful that i I can communicate through through texting and through message and things like that. But you you want to acknowledge and 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 recognize that. And then and then the other thing is the other important thing is that that you actually kind of touch into this. And yes, for it's wonderful if you've been listening to this. And we invite you to continue to listen to uh, to these shows on a regular basis. Like Numsa says, he learns from this. But the other part that you want to do is you also don't want to get what we call allowing yourself to simply get used to it. Because that's actually one of the things of unresolved grief. You're going through things and you're feeling pain, but you say, oh, well, you know, I'm grateful. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to tough it up. I'm going to tough it up. I'm going to, uh, the, I mean, look, look around me, look, look around me. And uh, the, everybody else has uh, lost their immediate family member. And I only lost my sick my relatives and look around me there are many people that has become homeless at least here in the united states and i still have my home i own i still have a place to live right and and uh, even though i have to downsize and so i'm going to be grateful and then i'm going to move through this and i'm going to be strong I'm going to be strong and I'm going to be positive and keep powering through. Well, yes, it's good to be strong. It's good to be positive. Uh, and, and I'm absolutely, like as you said, I'm all into being positive, being grateful. And it is just as important, if not more important, to actually address your grief. Because if you're being strong, being positive, powering through, and you don't to address the grief, what happened is you actually really put pushing the grief away. You're feeling pain in you and you're like, gotta be positive, gotta be strong, gotta be there for my kids, gotta be there for my clients, gotta be there for my cats. And then you push away the grief and that's when grief become unresolved grief. And then what happened is unresolved grief, many studies shows and we've seen this all the time where at the beginning you feel it in your emotional heart and then it moved from your emotional heart to physical grief cause changes and then when it's uh, in your body and not just in your feelings but it's actually when there is something we know that when we have stress it causes changes in our physical body the same things grief is a significant stress to the emotional being and so it caused changes to the physical and that's when we see a lot of unresolved mysterious uh, illness back pain migraine change in your your uh, a, a lot of the uh, a lot of your 
your body routine and things like that. Do you know anybody that has uh, facing some seemingly challenge with any of those NIMSA? Oh, yes, I do. I do know so many people, actually. And uh, there's a girl, she goes to school with my daughter. Her, her mom went through divorce. And uh, she's, she was telling me that she gets a really since her divorce. And she gets a headache constantly. And I said to her, I don't know how she copes with everything she's this person that when you basically you say i'm here to help she just prefers to get on with it she's used to it but you can see when she's in pain that she can't even open her eyes with a headache how painful that is and uh it's it's, it's a loss and for her having to go through that there are so many people that i know that who have gone through challenges and uh, they it, it's just having taking the step i always say to people like when they're grieving i'm like you need to get help and because for me you can ring me but i'm not a professional grieving coach i'm no clue what to say so i'm just gonna tell you the words of comfort but i don't know how to to play therapist i can play therapist to those who are seeking help to me but when it comes to grieving when someone is grieving it is hard to, to actually help them because you can see that they are reckless dr bigot and then you can see this person but you keep telling them get help and they, they don't they, they're like, I'll be okay, I'll be okay. And then they call you after four weeks or three weeks, they're still feeling the same way. So it's, it's for me, I've never gone through that deep, deep with the grief. Uh, there are things like prayers that helps me a lot. And I don't ignore things, the hitting pillows. And I'll show you what I, what I bought yesterday. Let me go get it. So... I bought, I bought this yesterday, so I have the Bible. <laughs> I have my Bible. So, you know, I've got chains on my, I've got chains on my, uh, on my uh, profile, which is broken the chains of that when I was going through tough times. But now I've got the sword. I bought myself a sword yesterday. It arrived yesterday. And the sword, the sword, this this sword represent, uh, it, it, it represent me actually breaking through, and fighting the enemy that tells me that that tries anything that comes my way that tries to manipulate me, it's like I am aware. So when I see this sword, it's in my Bible. I have to say, okay, Jesus was struck down. His blood went, poured, went on, it was struck down for me to be free. So I can no longer live in pain in my life. I can no longer, that means I'm not, that means I don't have to be in denial. I first, it's basically I point the sword in front of me. And I have to imagine the problem that I'm going through. And I have to tell the problem that this is what I'm going through. And this is, I am aware of this problem. And I have to basically imagine working out this problem. Does it help? It does help. And I also, I also speak to people like coaches like you. When I'm going through something, Dr. Bigot, you know, when, when I'm going through something, before we go live, I do mention it, that I am going through something. And when I bought this sword, um, I did find a house. It's in the process of uh, us getting the house and everything. And uh, it was me buying this sword that whatever I've been going through, and I'm glad that I stayed 
you know, I stayed in one place, in a place where being in the moment, being in the present moment, not rushing anything, just listening to you and listening to all the coaches and saying, don't say everything is just going to be okay. Just manifest for what way you want to be. And this sort of represent me telling the enemy that I, you can't, I cannot ignore you. I know what I'm facing. It's the knowing that this is the problem that I'm facing. So with the grief, for me, everyone that is listening, I will say Dr. Bickett is a grieving coach. I'm talking from my experience. Grief is not, a, if someone can say grief, they are, there's, I know there are step by steps. People say step by steps. But for me, it felt like a pain that was a roller coaster ride. And that roller coaster ride is a pain where you have to adapt uh, in the new world without the deceit. You have to face the memories without that person. It's the experience and the reality where you have to look in the present moment. If I used to pick up my phone and call my father, he's no longer there. It's a reality that I have to face. And it's, a, it's, 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 it's basically, it's not a game for someone to say, I'm going to be okay. So when I'm sitting here and somebody tells me that I'm going to be okay, for me, I'm like, no, you are not going to be okay. Because you're, it's like when you go to a roller coaster that you go through, uh, you go up and you don't know, sometimes you want to vomit, sometimes you are like, I want to get out of here. That's how it feels. And if you love someone, that pain is unbearable. And you need a professional, somebody that can actually trigger those feelings that are hidden that comes out when you're not prepared. It's a pain basically that comes out anytime when you're not prepared for it. But you need to deal with it. Like you were talking about unresolved and unrecognized. You need to deal with it properly because otherwise the health wise, it will leave you broken. And I don't think, for me personally, I don't think if the person that is on the other side in heaven. They don't want you to be broken or simply losing a job. With myself, with the coronavirus, I lost my business. I, I lost money in the business. I lost the freedom where I can just buy anything that I want and pick up my card and just go and buy anything that I want. I find myself being careful. And uh, there's so many things, life-changing things that had to change in that moment. So it wasn't a game. It was real, but I had to face it. I had to face it the right way as it was real. So, uh, Dr. Bigot, what do you give someone advice? Like everything that I've just uh, said now, like it, you, you, if you are basically facing the world on your own, this new world on your own, and uh, what do you do? One minute this person is here, and the next they are not here, or simply loss of money or loss of something, disappointments. What do you do? Yeah, the first thing I would recommend is to do, to do not. Do not cope. Cope has been such a widespread thing in this society. Oh, I'm coping well, and it is become as if that. And and yes, you want to be able to to cope with changes and things, and that is a uh, the definition of cope is to deal effectively with something difficult. Now. There is a difference between dealing effectively with something as a part of being able to deal effectively with something difficult or a loss is actually grief requires you more than just coping or managing. The other word for cope is to manage, to subsist, to survive. Now, grief requires you 
to be more than just being able to have uh, some people say, oh, I'm coping, I'm, I'm being positive, I'm coping. And then I'm being, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, I'm coping. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, pow I'm powering through, I'm coping. Now, I always say a lot of things, if you, if you listen to me, I say, I want to thrive, not just survive. For you to be able to thrive, when you have a loss, when you have something that impactful to you, that cause unsettling feelings, you actually want to be able to recover from it, not just treading the water. Imagine think, uh, imagine you just being thrown into a, a <coughs> excuse me, being thrown into a lake or something. So surviving means. You're treading water. You're treading water. I'm, I'm, I'm surviving. I'm staying afloat. You know, I'm staying afloat. The other thing that here, the more, uh, more carbon, I think, in perhaps in the U U.S. is I'm, I'm staying afloat. You're staying afloat. You're paddling and paddling and paddling, paddling. Eventually, you're gonna get tired paddling, and then guess what happened? You're gonna drown. I'm not trying to be mean, but that's the reality. On the other hand, if you're thriving, you're like, okay, I got thrown in the water. <laughs> and so what would I love? Because I mean, it, it's some, some situation you might say, well, actually, I kind of, you know, want to hang out in here. But if somebody throw you in the water, in a murky water, ne nevertheless, because that's what situation that we don't want is going on in life, right? In you, somebody throw you into a puddle of murky, a, a, a lake that's full of grass, for instance, what are you going to do? Do you really want to just paddling in there and surviving and coping? Or do you want to be able to thrive where you are able to swim to the edge and get out of there <laughs> and and walk away? For, uh, and and but you in the meantime, so we're not talking about that now. There is a the, why don't I want to make sure that you catch the what, whomever listening, if you're listening to this, that you swim through that water and then get back on your feet and walk away. And so that is the most important thing. A lot of people say, oh, I'm coping, I'm coping. I'm coping. When you have grief, coping is a very bad thing to do. <laughs> and why? Because you actually, that's when you keep trying to do this and trying to do that. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. I'm still paddling. I'm still paddling. Well, the grief is in there. And eventually you get tired paddling and you, you drown. Or if it is a toxic water, the toxin will get into your system without you even knowing and harm you that way anyway. So one way or the other. And what you want to do is to resolve that grief as fast as you can. Time does not heal all. And time does not heal grief. This is a very major misunderstanding that the society have and seemingly there are a lot of different things that people say people in the US versus in the UK versus in Mediterranean country and some other uh, other places you know you're in from Africa Asia they have different misunderstanding about grief but one of the most worldwide sadly enough the most worldwide misunderstanding about grief is time will heal grief time doesn't heal grief time only morph it change it into something else that become that you don't feel it as much you don't see it as much but it continue to damage you what you want to do is to resolve your grief to swim through be able to have somebody who help you swim through the lake and get out of it as fast as you possibly can instead of coping which is just i'm paddling here i'm i'm you know i'm staying afloat i'm staying afloat eventually you get tired or the toxin from your water from the water will get in you. And then the other thing is, well, a lot of people don't understand this. And 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 sometimes people who are in the profession, this is why there is a large uh, a large burned out, so to say, from the healthcare industry, is some many 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 counselors, psychotherapists, 
uh, social worker are not specifically trained in grief. You actually are trained in psychology, Numsa, and you, as you said, you're not trained in grief. And so many, many counselor and psychotherapists and social worker are uh, and psychiatrists are not specifically trained in grief. It's kind of almost like a specialty or a subspecialty. If you think about the the to, to give you an easier analogy to understand, if you think about your primary care doctor, your family doctor, you know, that person might not be trained in cancer specifically. If you get cancer, you go find an oncologist. Uh, my background is in oncology. I'm a, I'm a board certified oncologist as well. And so people understand that with the, uh, the, the physical medical part of the healthcare, but they don't realize. And sometimes, sometimes the primary care, uh, the, 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 the so-called primary care counselor or psychotherapist don't realize it themselves either so unfortunately it's kind of a little bit like in veterinary medicine where some primary care veterinarian don't realize they don't know either so if you are experiencing grief and you've been coping and you've been like you said about your friend I'm going to be okay, I'm going to be okay. Or you you know there are th- changes in your life and you like, okay, well, that happened and then now I start having all these symptoms and, and I'm not or I'm, I'm feeling stuck is the other part of it. Then perhaps even if you're working with a counselor, perhaps just get a kind of get a second opinion and and it might be grief it might not be grief i'm not saying everything always grief but it might or might not be grief and 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 if you don't know it can keep going a lot a fair number of people that i see actually people who has been through counseling (laughs) end up in mental hospital (laughs) and then they come to me for the grief part so so that is one thing. What's your thought about that, Numsa? About paddling versus actually being able to swim through it and and get back on your feet. You are muted. The part where you swim through it and you get back on your feet, and about what you are saying about different cultures, they deal with the grief in different ways. It is the truth because like in my culture, you have to suck it up when somebody dies. You keep talking about it. They, it shows weakness. But in my family, in my household, like my, my parents are different. They let you talk um, about things. They let you basically express yourself. It's like my dad is gone and my stepdad is gone now. So I have my siblings. When I talk, when I talk to my siblings, I let them ex- ex- express what they are feeling, what they are going through. It's okay. I teach them. It's okay to not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. You don't have to be okay all the time. Like you put pictures on social media. And you say, look at me, I have this wonderful life, but knowing deep down that you are not okay. So I always teach them to express what they are feeling if they are not okay. And just say, I'm not okay, I don't feel okay. And um, so it is okay to deal with basically instead of saying I'm coping, like I agree with you, coping, it means I'm drowning. And I'm hoping that I'm gonna I'm gonna survive, but you know that you're actually drowning. So I think swimming through it is uh, is actually and then get back on your feet. It is okay to face the grief and swim through that pain and deal with it properly, and also having somebody helping you through it, professional helping you through it. Uh, there are some professional hospital like doctors they, uh, in other countries they can help uh, in healthcare for free. Uh, some you have to pay, and even on social media there are some coaches that give uh, free uh, consultation. So things are different. And if you have online now internet, you can do virtual coaching as well. You don't have to travel if you don't want to. If you feel you want to stay at home, you can stay.
uh, when, when it comes to the basically coping business where people will say I'm coping. I don't like these words, I'm coping. So for me, basically, if, I, if I'm going through something in family, they know that I don't pretend. If I'm going through something, I'm going through something. So you can either be around me if you want me to pretend that everything is okay, what is not okay. So I, if I'm if I'm going through something, I tell you that I'm going through something. But I also I'm not afraid to get professional help for people to help me. So in that way, it's not that I'm good. It's because I grew up with the parents who really really cared about me, who I used to express what I what I what I was feeling, and then that parent was no longer there. I was very close to my dad and my stepdad and that were no longer there. So for me, uh, when I'm not coping very well, I basically go to a professional because I'm used to that. And if I don't talk about it, if I'm going through something and I don't face the truth, it hits me, it gives me a feeling that is uncomfortable. And this feeling is very, very uncomfortable. Uh, and uh, it basically brings pain inside of me. And it basically, I don't want it. It makes me basically feel that I'm completely a different person. I don't know whether you know when I'm when I'm describing what I'm feeling. You know, when you are like no money, you are happy. And then now you are confronted with this pain inside that is like in your chest is like tightens your chest is like your body tells you that i'm not okay so how can you ignore that pain and say i'm gonna live with it i'll put i'll put it for me i'm basically a current i put my hands up i couldn't live with that pain or one month two months unless i get i have to get professional help and that's how i cope and the people can see me. What you see on show, social media, basically, for me, is not a fake character. It's real. And when I'm facing something, I just face it 100% and then I move on. That's why I'm able not to go. I'm not able to go into depression. I have never, ever gone into depression. <laughs> the reason why is when that feeling appears of anxiety, I'm like, I don't want this. It's, un it's uncomfortable. So that's why I have to swim through it, Dr. Viget. So I don't know whether have you ever had uh, clients basically that comes to you and tell you that, you know what, I don't know what is going on, but this person that is me, is not me. So uh, help me. I don't feel okay. So I don't know, but I've experienced it myself. Yeah, a fair number of people actually do. The, the thing, one thing that you mentioned, though, a lot of time, you know, people, people value being, nowadays, people value being productive. Some of us has hear the term that being busy is the new stupid, something like that. But then we still believe in being productive. And so we value being productive in certain society, a lot of the Western society so much that we say, we're just going to be, uh, you know, as long as we're still productive, we're going to keep going. And then even though we're not feeling quite right, we're going to keep going. And, and also the other part is people has a misunderstanding that they're going to be better on their own. And it's not even necessarily a denial, but it's more of a misunderstanding that this is why, this is why in some scenario, we have physical illness that's found late. Why? Because, well, you know, I kind of have that strange stomach ache. Come and come and go. And that stomach ache. And uh, first I was having this kind of stomach ache. And then I was having a little nausea. Maybe I was just stressed. And then something else, well, there was something else going on. So maybe I was just this. And then you finally go to the doctor. So you're later because you're in such a humongous pain and you find out you have cancer. Or, well, you know, my chest doesn't feel quite right. 
and I have this episode of tiredness, all oh, this and that and that and that. And then you finally go to the doctor and find out you need quadruple bypass. So it's not just actually with emotion. It's also with physical that our society, that a lot of time nowadays to learn to say, I am going to keep going. I'll be okay. And and, and some of the uh, some of it because we, we believe that oh if we stop or slow down it's a form of weakness. You got to be strong. So if you stop and you say oh well then it's a form of weakness and in 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 many time in this main, uh, society it's if you have physical illness well, it's not great, but it's okay. Everybody understand. But then when it comes to emotion, it's a stigma. It got to be a weakness. I mean, come on. Aren't you going to be strong? You, what, what do you mean you have to take some time off for emotional health? That's for many people is a sign of weakness. It is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of it's health is health, whether it's emotion or physical health is health so you if you take time to take a break from your work you don't work seven days a week why do you ask your emotional status to work seven days a week and so so that is one thing that we want a lot of time people has that that misunderstanding and yes i do see a lot of people that come to me uh, a fair number of people are actually come to me because they are grieving for the loss of the uh, for physical thing. They come to me and they're not even knowing. A lot of uh, many cases that come to me, they come to me, they say, you know, I'm losing my job. I'm losing my marriage. And, so, and sometimes, sometimes I, they come to me, I'm stuck. And, and 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 in in multiple different form and the peop and they come to me saying, well, you know, I'm I'm grieving because I'm losing my job. And then when we talk about it, or my marriage, or something else, and then when we talk about it, what happened is, well, like the friend you mentions, I've been having migraine, and this is truly very common. It's a, it's a very common thing. I've been having migraine or having back pain or some kind of random pain or some kind of strange health conditions. I remember one lady come in because she, she literally was on the verge of, she's been put in probations because she wasn't able to go to work because she's been having this stomach problem. And she was really sad and really upset and all this particularly come after she got promoted and so we worked together and in the, in in the in the first session she, re, she recognized that all the symptoms come not long after she got promoted with that promotion she actually need to change her work schedule and she choose to move as well like her residence those are multiple different things that can cause unrecognized grief. People don't realize promotions, which cause changes, can cause grief. So she just she's like, oh, I, I've said there's a lot of unsettling feelings come from the change, which is grief. But guess what? She just got promoted. Who has time for unsettling feelings? Let's push that away. Let's power through. I got to, I'm, you know, I'm got, I just got, got promoted and it was quite a jump in position. I just got promoted. I better perform. Better be keeping up. Better be, oh, well, guess what happened? Several months later, the grief turned around in a different form. And then she started to not being able to attend things and having to miss work because it's intestinal problem that, doesn't respond. She went to doctors, specialists, uh, holistic care, you name it. <laughs> and and uh, she was even trying some energy thing. And and so actually the interesting is the energy things that actually lead her to like, maybe it's, maybe it's uh, you know, now I'm grieving, I maybe I should clear this up. But once it's actually, once she understand that, her symptoms improve. 
Now, it doesn't mean that it's immediately resolved the grief, but the system that I use, it does not take months or years of counseling. It's actually within not within eight to 12 weeks, we resolve your grief. So we have you swim out of that puddle of toxic water that you've been thrown into and get on your feet in the dry ground in eight to 12 weeks. It doesn't take months and months or even in some cases years of uh, 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 work, so to say, because guess what? The goal is for you to get back on your life uh, wonderfully and thrive, not just survive. But so that is a lot of people do that. A lot of people don't realize the same thing. People that come from mental hospital, it's, it's always very saddening to see this. Many of them been on other form of support, so to say, and they are, uh, they're not getting the support they, they have, they need and they come and eventually, uh, break down. And in a lot of time, it's actually they look like they're doing okay and they're doing okay. And then something happened. Grief is almost like when you have grand result grief, it's kind of like a volcano, you know, those volcanoes, Numsa, where, you know, it's, it's like there is this hot lava going on inside. And if you have a, uh, a if you have an earthquake, and it's just a, a small earthquake on a solid land, eh, it it might cause some damage. But what happens if you have an earthquake on a, a on a volcano like that? It's going to erupt and blow up really badly, and so that can happen as well. Seemingly something simple and just throw everything out of proportions. But yes, a lot of time, unre- a lot of people come. And from all these symptoms, these symptoms of unfulfilled, you tried everything, you tried personal development, you pay, you, you put in a lot of time and money and, and, and so forth. And still you kind of stuck, um, you know, if, if anybody ever feels stuck in their life, it, um, you kind of keep hitting the, the, uh, the, the glass ceiling that could be because something that's holding you back in the form of unresolved grief. That is so true, Dr. Bigot. Yeah, you just have to, uh, for me, basically what you just said, you basically, you just have to swim and find help, uh, no making excuses. And unfortunately, it's not easy. Somebody can say, no, I'm sorry. It's not easy. I do agree that it is not easy. But if you know um, the cost of losing the good health that you have, like before, uh, for me personally, like if you have met NOMSA 2008 or 2009, and this NOMSA that is here now, this NOMSA was always there, but I didn't know that NOMSA was there. I basically don't. I don't stay, I don't just sit there. If I know that I'm not okay, I don't just sit there. Everyone calls me annoying. My family and uh, my children, they all call me annoying uh, because I I, I basically speak when I'm not feeling too good or when something is not right. I don't just sit there hoping that somebody's gonna, things will get sorted. I just seek help and asking people to help me. And that's what I will say that uh, Dr. Bigot is a grieving coach, and I'm sure there are some grieving coaches out there who can help you if you're going through challenging times, uh, losing work, losing something that is important to you is still a grief. And you can get in touch with the grief coaches. Don't get in touch with me. You can get in touch with me to connect with Dr. Bigot, I don't deal with the grief. I deal with the love department. So when that love disappears, uh, that's where you need uh, a coach and you need a grieving coach. So, and uh, when you are facing the new world without your loved ones and uh, the environment where it used to be, if that environment has changed, so you still need uh uh, basically help and Dr. Bigot um, I know if someone uh, so I'm going to ask this uh, uh, quick question how do you let 
I know we, we, we need to go, but how do you let go of the attachment? Now I'm grieving, but the attachment is still there of a disease. How do I let that go completely? Yes, absolutely. So it is actually a process that is something that you, first of all, with everything in life, you you have to choose to want to do it. So in other words, like we say, it's, if you've been thrown into a a, 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 a puddle of, of a lake with toxicity or something, you have to want to do, you will have to want to swim through it instead of just keep paddling, right? And so that is that. And then in terms of how you really being able to resolve the grief on how you being able to let go of the attachments, it's actually a process that we help you with. It's a step-by-step process that literally take the whole, the whole coaching, grief coaching thing is helping you uh, to, ha- to help you resolve with uh, your so-called attachment to resolve your grief, to resolve the the unple- uh, unpleasantness that you are feeling. And so it's a step-by-step process. It's not, here's a magic one. And and the first step, the first step is to choose to do that. And like you said, Numsa, to connect with a grief coach. I provide work internationally. So in other words, I... I work remotely, so feel welcome to connect with me on social media or, or email me. Go to my website, The Joyful Riches Beyond Grief, or From Grieving to Joyful Living. But if you want to work with someone local, there are there, sh- there would be somebody local in your area as, uh, as well. And if you cannot find somebody local, if you cannot find somebody local who are specialized in grief, also connect with me because uh, specialists are connected. It's kind of like almost people, uh, the same thing, whether it's in medicine, physical medicine or this. We have our connection and you might just not able to find it, but I might know somebody local to you that, you know, not on social media, you can't find it, what have you. So if you if you are going through things and the how you let go is it's a step-by-step process. Now, it does not take years. It does not even take many months. It takes weeks to do that. When you do it properly and in a, in a proper manner, so in the correct manner, so to say, the, the way that we teaches you. And and it's, it's an evergreen tool. So once you learn how to do it one, you'll be able to use it for different things. But... Yes, um, it, it's a step-by-step process, and just know that you're welcome to connect with me. And if you prefer somebody local, and you cannot find somebody local who are, who are grief specialists, then feel welcome to connect with me as well, because then I I know people that you might not know and you might not find in social media and and things like and and in the uh, internet and things like that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Biget. Please connect with Dr. Biget. You can go to my website and get in touch with me, or you can go to the talk show page and message Dr. Biget. She will reply to you, or she or I will reply to you and connect to you with her. She's one of the um, top managers at Ngozi talk shows, so she, she does. She is in charge of the page, so get in touch with her. She'll get it back get back to you live with grace everyone and god bless we are here 1 p.m uh, monday to friday uk time god bless